So here we need to do the same thing. However, we need to now deal with more variable expressions. So we really have to be careful with your algebra here when you apply this. Okay, so it's going to be the same thing. We're still going to be um, solving for x. Okay, now, but the difference is we're going to have a variable a in our answer. So we're going to have to deal with that variable with our algebra. So just over the side here, I'm just going to let my quadratic formula variables a equals 3a, b is going to be equal to a, and c is equal to negative 6. Okay, so I need to identify my coefficients. Okay, so there are my coefficients a, b, and c. Okay, so once I've identified those coefficients, I'm going to plug it into the quadratic formula. Okay, now I don't want to be intimidated just because these are variables here. We're just going to plug it in as is. So negative b, so it's going to be negative a plus minus square root of a squared minus 4 times a. Well, the a value is 3a here, so there's that's what I'm going to substitute for my a in my quadratic formula. And my c value is negative 6. Okay, so all I'm doing is following my quadratic formula here. And just because there's variables, that's okay, because those variables represent numbers. As long as I just put them in place of numbers, we're going to be okay. So then we have denominator is 2 times a. Well, the a value is 3a. Okay, so there's my solution for x. Now I just need to simplify this. Okay, so negative a plus minus a squared. Okay, don't don't square root that a because there's a minus in there. Because square roots and minuses plus minuses are incompatible. So we need to get negative four times three times negative six. That's going to be positive. Uh, that's going to be seventy-two. And we have an a in there. And in the denominator, we're going to have 6a. Okay, there are no perfect square factors that we can take out of here. We cannot square root across that plus minus the plus here. Okay, so we're just going to have to leave that expression like that. And there's our solution. That's the final solution for that. Okay, so again, all we're doing is now doing the same thing, but we're having to deal with variables variable expression. So here, again, my a is equal to a, my b value is equal to b, my c value is equal to 2. Plug it into the quadratic formula, it's going to be negative, oh sorry, that's going to be negative b, isn't it? Okay, so b is equal to negative b. Okay, so we're going to have negative negative b, so it's going to be b plus minus negative b squared is b squared minus 4 times a times 2. That's going to be all over 2a. Okay, so then we all we need to do is simplify this expression. And if there's any perfect squares in the square root, we'll take that out. So it becomes b plus minus uh, b squared minus 8a and that's all over 2a there's no nothing we can do with this to simplify this there's no perfect square factor although this is a perfect square we cannot it's not a factor because there's a minus there we cannot take that out so there's our final solution okay and this one here so again it's the same thing we're just going to to identify our a, b, and c values. Now it looks really crazy. Now before we do this, we really should move, make this equal to zero. So we have d squared x squared plus 5cdx plus 3d squared equals zero. Okay, so there is a common factor of d that we can divide out to start with. Okay, so we can just say as long as d is not equal to zero, okay, we can just say that we can divide this whole equation by d. And again, 
just like before when we divided, we simplified the equation by a common factor, if we don't do this and put it into the quadratic formula, that's okay. We just end up with a uh, expression in the quadratic formula that can be simplified. So I'm going to just get rid of that common factor of d by dividing by d first. Okay, just to make it a little bit easier, so I end up with d x squared plus 5 c x plus 3 d equals 0. Okay, so just make sure you see what we did here. We divided both sides by d. Okay, so now I have I can just plug this into a quadratic formula. And again, just we just need to recognize where what our coefficients are. There's our a, that represents b, and that represents c. Okay, so a is equal to d. The b in the formula is equal to 5c. And the c is equal to 3d. Okay, so although this is, you know, there's lots of variables here and we have to think a little bit because we're not used to it. we got to train our brains to kind of think algebraically. All these, all we're doing is identifying the number parts of the, the a, b, and c coefficients on this quadratic expression. So this is a quadratic x squared x and a constant. Once we have that, we're just going to then plug this expression into the quadratic formula to solve for x. So x is equal to negative b plus minus b squared is going to be 25c squared minus 4 times a times c. Okay, and that's all over 2 times a, the a value was d. Okay, and then we just simplify that. We're going to check to see if there's any perfect squares inside the square root. Uh, in this case, there are, again, are no perfect squares. Okay, because this perfect square here and this perfect square here, they're not factors. So we cannot factor them out of the square root. Okay, remember that adding and subtracting is incompatible with square roots. So anytime we have a plus or minus inside the square root, we have to be very careful. So we end up with, in the denominator, 2 times the a value is d, and that's it. There's nothing that can be simplified here. Okay, so that is our final solution.